ओके योर कोई पास लेगा यो मक्के इधर ही योर क्वेश्चन इज रीइनकार्नेशन इज इट रियल और नॉट व्हाई डिड यू क्वेश्चन व्हाई डिड दिस क्वेश्चन कम इज इट रियल और नॉट फॉर यू Unfulfilled desire. So yeah. Now the question is, your question is, is it real or not? Question came to you. How did it come? Uh, that is what I mean. Uh, everyone says that reincarnation happens because there is some unfulfilled desire in previous life. Mm. But uh, desires and all are just something in the mind. Mm -hmm. Normal uh, projections. Mm. So when the body dies, so even the desire it just goes away. So how will it be projected to someone? So. Your, the first of all, you have to understand the body, mind and soul relationship. Okay? The soul, Atma, is universal in nature. It's not individual in nature. It is Paramatma. Throughout the universe, it is there. It is beyond, within and beyond. It is not local to one body. That's, it is not English word, soul. It, what I call use the word Sanskrit word called Paramatma. Okay. So there is no question of going place one place to other place because it's everywhere. Right? That's why it's called Paramatma. Then you experience that as your self Atma. Okay. Atma and Paramatma are not different. They are one and the same, but we experience individuality. Okay. So it's like Paramatma, if you think, is like space, which is there throughout. Paramatma is infinite and throughout. Then is there a space in this room? Okay. This individual space and the universal space. Is individual space and universal space different? For practical experience, it's appear to be different. That's why you are staying in here, otherwise you will be staying in the uh, field. So you are experiencing individual space inside and universal and outer space, out, space outside, outer. But they are not different. Similarly, individual Atma and universal Atma, they are not different. Jivatma and Paramatma. Atma and Paramatma, they are same. Okay. Now, this Atma has a instrument called mind okay the mind is a part of the energy so the mind is also we experience as individual mind okay in reality mind is universal in nature so when you say universal in nature you have a hunger you have thirst you have sadness you have happiness how is that happiness different from her happiness but happiness itself is same the conditions may be varying right hunger is same hunger for you hunger for dog hunger for monkey hunger for uh, a elephant hunger for amoeba the hunger is same but under what condition it triggers may be different right the conditions which trigger is called individual condition individual mind individuality Whereas the commonality is called universal. So there is actually a universal mind. That universal mind is called mind of God. Okay. What you feel as individual is only conditions which trigger these emotions. That's all. That's because of your individuality, your, your learning, your, your, your experience of life. That conditions. But mind is fundamentally universal in nature. The Atma is fundamentally universal in nature. So what is these conditions which are there? That's your learning, right? So let's say for example, you grow up in a kind of family where sweets are very delicious, sweets they like. So the condition, whenever, whenever, you, speak, whenever you see, look at sweet, you feel like eating sweet. You get hunger, gets triggered. Whereas in some other family, they don't like sweet. Okay, that sweet doesn't trigger their hunger. So this is called conditions. These conditions are called vasanas, impressions. What triggers these emotions? So these impressions are individual in nature. The basic basic functioning of the mind is universal in nature. Intelligence, you have intelligence. Okay. 
A bacteria has intelligence. A mosquito has intelligence. Amoeba has intelligence. A dinosaur has intelligence. The intelligence is same. The operation of the intelligence may be different in a different circumstances. There is a universal part in each of us and there is an individual part. Individual part is our experience. Universal part is what is there for all the beings. Are you clear? So now the individual experiences is what you call as Virvasanas. Now you are primarily you are driven by your Vasanas. Why do you want to go to something? Because I like that. That's your Vasana. The like, the happiness is triggered by likes and dislikes. So over a period of your lifetime you are getting triggered by these Vasanas. And your life is goes on. The question is will life end after the death of the body? Okay. That life will end after the death of the body if the mind is part of the body. But mind is not part of the body. <laughs> brain is part of the body but mind is the one which uses the brain. It's not the mind is something which is sitting inside the brain but mind is the one which uses the brain. So after the body dies, this mind which is individual impressions will move from one body to other body. That's why you experience that a soul has migrated from one body to other body. In reality, the soul itself doesn't migrate. It's the mind of the soul which migrates to one body to other body. That's called Jiva. Until that impressions get satisfied and become peaceful, that migration, constant migration will happen. Okay? Understand? This is called birth and rebirth. Forget about birth and rebirth. Okay. In in our life, let us say a body is born, right? The body comes from two cells of the mother. Okay. So from mother and father it came, body came. And where did you get the mind from? The impressions of the mind. Impression of the mind is society and family. But basic conditioning of the mind, hunger, peace and love and all those things is part of you already. So your mind, your what you call as mind is a contribution of society. Your learning, your experiences and all those things. Alright. So let us say somebody dies. I mean a human being doesn't, let us say human being is not, uh, some animal dies. What happens to the body? It decays. The body decays and becomes food for somebody else. Okay. Right? The decayed body becomes food for the somebody else. Okay? And some other organism grows out of that. And in human being, uh, in us, we burn the body. That our decayed body becomes a part of the universe. In the universe, there is nothing called end. Everything is recirculated. The body of an animal is recirculated in the form of other life forms. Got it? Isn't it? It is only the shape changes, the form changes, but there is a continuity of life in some other form. Let's say a, a deer, a dog dies. The insects come and eat it. Now it becomes in life for insects. So the body of the dog is circulated into the life of insects. Like that, everything of us is circulated, recirculated. Now the question comes, what happens to the impressions? Okay. The universe follows a principle that energy can be neither created nor destroyed. So your body is an energy. It is not created nor destroyed, but it is recirculated. Your mind is an energy. It is neither created nor destroyed. It is recirculated, part of that impressions. So your impressions will become a part of the another body. That's called reincarnation. So, uh, if a dog dies, its soul along with it, the impression, if it's carried to another man, uh, whenever it sees a bone, does the man, uh, whenever he sees a bone, does he want to eat it? Possible. How many people are like, uh, the moment uh, they look at the bone, they'll salivate? <laughs> Some of the impressions of animal life will come into human body. In a human being, you are all animals. 
there are monkeys all around okay human being is many animals put together in human skin there are snakes in human beings there are tigers in human beings and human being has some of the, many of the animal tendencies only positive human being gives is that human being can rise above animal tendencies and acquire some more higher impressions which we call divine impressions and possibly we can come out of these impressions so coming out of the impression is called liberation acquiring divine impressions is called say evolution but if the atma is always pure and it always carries a bag of impressions mm. it is not pure it is bound to something no it's not carrying actually okay now let me ask you a question you are seeing me right yes you are seeing me through glasses you are wearing right you are wearing the glasses okay that's and is glass seeing you or is glass seeing me or your eyes seeing me neither my brain is seeing seeing my right so now your brain is also not seeing brain is also instrument a dead him dead body also has a brain so the mind is sees through the brain mind also is in, in another instrument it's the atma the self sees through these instruments okay isn't it so let us say you see black color white color the seer is it affected by black and white yes because How? you can see the difference mind there is a difference in the mind but the seer himself is able to see black and white otherwise seer is not seer is not changing this you see through eyes good and bad black and white light and darkness but the seer is unaffected by this the instrument of seeing they change taking the impressions but the seer is able to see both other if the seer is not change seer changes then everything you you can't there's nothing constant let us say i see i see darkness okay i i see emptiness and i see fullness now the moment i see emptiness and fullness i become emptiness and fullness then i can't understand what is fullness and what is emptiness because i also change the i the the chaitanya the consciousness the consciousness is constant in both that's why it's able to see the consciousness or chaitanya is not affected by what's happening it's pure always but because it's associated with the body mind complex it starts it feels that i am going to the, going through these changes it's like when you are putting glasses you have forgotten that you are putting glasses the glasses have become part of you like that similarly the chaitanya or atma when it's put on the body mind complex it feels that i am the body mind complex which is not really so it's a feeling temporary Why should we carry the impressions to our bodies? That's because in that there's a feeling that you have forgotten that you are wearing glasses. You will continue to wear the. You are seeing, right? You don't remember constantly remember that you are wearing glasses. Okay. So once you like that, the atma also doesn't also wearing the body mind complex. It forgets that I am wearing body mind complex, and it will keep on doing it until one day. It, okay. Let me not use this body mind complex. it becomes habituated to that for a long time after some time okay i don't need the permanent complex that's called mukti liberation okay any questions let's see bhajan sir